Hello, my Nakamatachi. It's me again, and yes, with another face cam. I've got to say that everyone's super nice and encouraging comments has made this transition into this style of video a much less terrifying experience. Although with that being said, it's pretty obvious that I'm still going to have to practice and there's still some getting used to. For example, in the last video, I realized that I say um, the word um, a terrifying number of times, which is something that I'm going to have to fix. And sort of kind of like how I only realized that I apparently pronounced now, the word now, a little weirdly, which I didn't actually realize until you guys started mentioning it in the comments of some of my other videos. Although you guys all seem to be mentioning that to me out of fun and out of good nature, or at least I hope. But that word um, that is something definitely I am going to have to fix. But in any case, apart from all of that, it has just been a huge relief to know that I can still continue discussing One Piece with you guys, even in times when I have a busier than usual schedule. And speaking of time schedule, I have one exam left, which is actually on the same day that the official chapter is going to be released. So I don't know, I'm going to have to find a way to manage that. But so wish me luck. But anyways, in the meantime, to celebrate the fact that I am 75% through my mid-semester exams, I decided to reward myself. And I decided to watch the latest episodes of the Wano anime. So that's episodes 969 and 970, which I actually hadn't been watching because I'd been putting it off whilst I was studying for my exams to, you know, focus on my studies. And because I only have one left, I decided, you know, I'll give myself a little treat. And... Apart from how awesome the anime is, seriously, if you guys haven't been watching the anime, I would really, really recommend that you do so for the current Wano episodes. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was actually how I noticed a few things in the anime that really got me thinking. Now, I believe that this video should be safe for anime only fans so you guys can watch in peace. But what I wanted to discuss today was how the anime seems to be adding some, you know, filler material which doesn't actually seem to be filler at all. And this is especially because of some comments which Oda made as part of his author comments, um, which came out with chapter 1006. Basically, he said that it looks like the Wano Kuni arc has been um, animated with passion or has been the episodes have been created with passion. And so for, for us all to please dedicate a portion of our time to watch it. And now, this is where the question lies. Do we take this comment at face value? that Oda was just describing at how epically the um at how epic the episodes have been so far because they have again the animation has been brilliant and is that just what Oda is simply referring to or is he meaning something else you know is there some sort of subtext is he possibly saying that there are some hidden details which the anime has been including which us usually manga only readers would actually benefit from you know, maybe the anime is actually filling in gaps that are left because of the quicker pacing in the manga. And before we get into my discussion of the most latest episodes and the specific examples, I should quickly mention what I mean by this, especially for, you know, anime-only fans. So as manga readers are all too aware, the manga chapters often leave out lots of scenes to be off-screened, especially the fight scenes. Which is understandable because, you know, Oda has a huge story to tell and each chapter is only about, you know, 15 to 20 pages long. And so many characters and plot lines, um, especially the fights, again, don't get the dedicated amount of time that it deserves. Whereas the anime seemed to have the opposite problem where producers needed to make the most out of every frame. And so a lot of scenes, a lot of expressions um, became elongated and just extended so that so that the producers wouldn't run out of manga material so that they could continue coming out with weekly episodes which actually did cause a lot of unrest in the fan base and caused a lot of fans to stop watching the anime and just read the manga but I would actually say that this seems to be resolved in the Wano arc you know I can say for me personally I stopped watching the anime in I think the Fishman island arc and I stuck to just reading the manga because I felt that I was um because I was binge I was binging the series and I was just really really hungry and crazy to catch up and so just the all the extended the elongated scenes in the anime was just too much for me and I just wanted to quickly catch up on the story 
And so I would only watch, you know, snippets of, you know, my favorite scenes, which I would like to see, you know, on screen and how they animated it. But for the most part, I was just sticking to the manga. And so I would just watch these short clips to just supplement the manga. And that was only until the Wano arc. And maybe this is just my opinion, but I actually think that now the animation is doing a really good job of supplementing the manga. Especially when it comes to the fight scenes, which were off-paneled in the manga, but we get to actually watch it in full in the anime. So I think in this way, the manga and the anime has been coexisting, where the anime can pick up and supplement the manga with all that, you know, action goodness. Whereas Oda and his team can focus on the story as much as possible in the manga. But this is where it gets really interesting, because as we watch things in the animation, which wasn't, you know, all that present in the manga, we're left with questions as to what should be treated as just purely filler material that isn't canon because it didn't exist in the manga, or what should be, you know, taken, or what should be given more thought and consideration as possibly hints for things that were left out in the manga to be fully developed in the anime because, you know, maybe the producers received some notes or some details and information from Oda. So an example of this could be the Luffy and the Kaido fight back in Kuri. So in the manga, and you guys may have already heard about this or experienced this yourself, but there was some sort of inconsistency there. So in that fight, in the manga, Luffy gets one-shotted by Kaido and is defeated by him pretty quickly. And even though Luffy, you know, gets in some attacks himself, you know, he does his elephant gatling and his Kong organ gun, these attacks don't have a huge impact on Kaido, and although Kaido does fall to the ground, he's seen getting up pretty quickly in the manga. You know, he gets up pretty quickly, and actually in one of the panels it even seems like as he's getting up, it seems like he's getting ready with his own attack to, to defeat Luffy with his Thunder Bagua as he's getting up. So it seems like Kaido isn't all that impacted. Whereas in the anime, because that fight was extended, it seems like Luffy is, having, is faring a lot better than he did in the manga. You know, it seems like Kaido is a lot more impacted, that he's struggling a lot more, that it's taking him a while to get back up. And this difference is actually a pretty big one, because it actually makes a, quite a big difference as to how the characters are being portrayed, and as a result, how we understand their relative strength. So in the manga, I think the, you know, the quickness with which that fight was dealt was to sort of emphasize Kaido's strength, you know, how much comparab comparatively stronger he was than Luffy. And I think so then having this changed in the anime sort of confuses that a bit and makes it seem a little less clear, a little more unclear as to how much stronger Kaido is than Luffy at that point. You know, another instance could be the fight scene between Sanji and Drake after Yasui's execution. So whilst I love the fact that we got to watch this extended, that, you know, we get to see more of Sanji's action scenes, which as we know has been lacking in the post time skip um, era of One Piece. But in saying that, I also did wonder whether it was completely accurate, because it seemed like Sanji wasn't having too much trouble dealing with Drake, you know, without any extra needed help. You know, no haki, no nothing, just Sanji in his base form was going against Drake with not too much trouble, and just that considering what we know of Drake's position, what we know of his strength, just felt a little odd and a little off. But those are some older examples of anime episodes. Let's think about more recent episodes, because the more recent episodes have gotten me thinking about this second part of the question, whether Oda has, you know, provided the producers with some notes as to future developments, and whether the producers have been keeping this in mind as they animate the series, because there are a lot of details in the anime which seems to pick up where the manga sort of left, what the manga sort of left vague. And again, you know, considering what Oda said, that he, that we should dedicate some of our time to watch the anime, really has me thinking, you know, is there a hidden layer of meaning to this? So an example could be in episode 996, I believe. It was the episode where the Roger Pirates and the Whitebeard Pirates are having their fight. And again, so, so awesome that we got to see this extended in all of its glory and goodness. And there was one particular detail which really intrigued me. 
And there was, and that was the little scene between Scopa Gaban facing off against Odin, which for me really raises a question as to Gaban's strength. So we know from his portrayal already that he sort of followed Roger and Rayleigh, that he might be sort of the next in line in terms of strength. But having him go against Odin in the fight then gives us even a lot more detail. You know, are we supposed to take this scene and suppose that that means that Gaban's strength is, you know, equal or rival to Odin's? Because if it is, then that gives actually a lot of information about Gaban's character, or at least related to his strength, because we know a lot about how strong Odin is. And now let's get to the most recent episodes and the most recent examples, which was what really got me thinking and what made me want to discuss this with you guys. And actually, this really concerns episode 969. And this is a scene of a conversation between Silver's Rayleigh and Goldie Roger, which wasn't present in the manga. And, you know, the fact that it wasn't there in the manga at all would first indicate that it's just filler material. But the contents of that conversation just seem so heavily laden with meaning that I was just awestruck. And my brain just went haywire, thinking and wondering as to whether it means something more. So the scene that I'm talking about, this conversation, is with Rayleigh asking Roger whether he remembers when they first met. And Roger says yes, that he invited Rayleigh to turn the world upside down with him. And Rayleigh's response to that is that he also asked, or he also told Rayleigh, that their meeting was fate. It was fated, that they were fated to meet each other. And then Roger goes even further and says, and asks Rayleigh, did they fulfill the promise? To which Rayleigh answers yes. And this, this is just a really, really interesting conversation. Because it seems to have so many hints as to some of the remaining mysteries in the series related to Joy Boy and the One Piece treasure. Actually, um, to anime only fans, I'm so sorry, I made a mistake at the beginning of this video. You will have to skip ahead to the time shown on the screen because I am now going to discuss some manga only related content. Uh, Sorry, I forgot that I'd actually have to be discussing some of this, so please skip ahead and then you can watch the rest of the video in peace. Now for everyone else, what I was thinking about and what this conversation could be related to, uh, so Roger's comment that he wants to turn the world upside down seems to be related to other comments that we've seen in the Wano arc, you know, to do with the idea that the world is going to be overturned, that we're going to see a new dawn. What we saw in Toki's flashback, that when Odin asked her, you know, you've been waiting, you've been skipping ahead in time to see a day when the world is going to be overturned. And that seems to be pretty similar to what Roger is saying in the anime, that he's going to turn the world upside down. It also seems to be a possible hint or a possibly linked to that mystery of what Roger and Luffy's dreams are. So, you know, we found out recently that becoming Pirate King isn't sort of the end goal of Luffy's, nor was it for Roger, that they actually have some further dream. You know, is it possibly somehow linked to turning the world upside down? And then Rayleigh's comment, you know, emphasizing, pointing out to Roger that you said we were fated to meet. Seems to be, you know, the anime emphasizing this element, this theme of fate, this theme of destiny. You know, supposing that actually based on what they found out at Laugh Tale, based on what they found out in the treasure and all the sort of histories and sort of all the mysteries of the world, that fate, that destiny actually plays a much bigger role than we realize. Which is really interesting because we know we do know that destiny is an important theme in One Piece. And then the final question of Roger asking Rayleigh whether they fulfilled the promise. You know, what promise? Is this the promise that we were introduced to all the way back in Fishman Island when they said that Joy Boy made a promise to Fishman Island which he couldn't keep? Um, but it has been prophesied, or well, that it has been said, you know, it has been said through legends that someday, that one day, there will come someone who will fulfill Joy Boy's promise in his place. You know, is this Luffy? Or, like I said, is all of this just meaningless filler? Because I just, 
it just really seems to me that this conversation was just so laden. It just has so much subtext to it. You know, it has so much potentially meaningful details that I just find it hard to believe that it was just filler, especially when I consider Oda's comments that we should take our time to watch these episodes and just how many connections it could possibly have to other mysteries and other questions that we still have in Wano but One Piece as a series. I don't know, it just really got me thinking as to whether the anime was adding in more details and more possibly hinting information that we're missing out on in the manga. But in saying that, I would be interested in hearing what you guys have to say and what you think. You know, whether you think that it's just a case of my brain going, you know, completely crazy and nuts again, or whether, you know, you think that there is a possibility that there is more to this than, than what meets the eye. So let me know by leaving a comment below and please don't forget to like and share this video and please subscribe. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys don't get sick of me saying this because I believe I might say it a few more times. But I am hoping to reach 10,000 Nakamatachi by our, ch uh, by our channel's one year anniversary. So any help on this matter would be very, very much appreciated. And as always, I do appreciate you guys so much more than you will ever know for always tuning in and having fun with me on these discussions. You guys truly are the best. Alright, this is Joy Girl. I'll see you again soon.